Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie, and in this video, I am going to be making some of our favorite from scratch bread recipes. These recipes include some sandwich bread, a sourdough loaf, sourdough English muffins, hamburger buns, and flour tortillas. All of these recipes are so simple, and when prepped and made over the weekend, it makes our weekly meal plan simpler and saves on our grocery bill. So first I am going to start with the sandwich bread. I just add two and a half cups of warm water, a tablespoon of active dry yeast is what I use. You can also use instant yeast. Just know that active dry yeast is gonna take a bit longer. I gave it about 10 minutes. Um, I'm also going to add a tablespoon of honey to this and then I'm gonna let it sit. I wanted to show you the leftover sandwich bread that I had. This is the same recipe and this has just been out on the counter for I think at least four days. Um, you can see it's still pretty squishy. It has some moisture still left to it. It's not stale yet. It does fall apart just a little bit but this still makes great toast. Next I'm going to add six and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour and a teaspoon of salt. Then I'm gonna turn on my mixer for about four minutes until um, the dough is just a nice ball and it's not sticking to the sides. My husband brings a sandwich to work every day. This recipe makes two loaves, which gets us through two weeks. This bread freezes so well. And one of the main hurdles with homemade bread without preservatives is that it dries out so quickly. But what I do is I store it in the freezer, I pull it out in the afternoon and make a sandwich for the next day before I go to bed. So it has time to thaw slightly, enough for it, for it to be cut. And then it just goes right back into the freezer. This really helps it to not dry out. After that, I'm just gonna shape it into a ball and put it back in the bowl. Here, I sprayed down the sides of the bowl with just some avocado oil spray, and I covered it with plastic wrap, and I let it rise for about an hour. My house is 120 years old, so it's very drafty, and this is February after all, and I live in the Pacific Northwest. So I like to put my bread in the oven with the light on, just so it is a little bit warmer. Okay, so after about 60 minutes, it should have doubled in size. Here, I should have also sprayed the plastic wrap. My bowl was not quite big enough, but I wasn't wanting to dirty another one, so I just used my mixing bowl. Um, and then we're gonna punch it down and then shape it into two loaves and put them into some greased loaf pans. Then after that, I'm going to cover them and let them rise again for about another 20 minutes. Um, while they rise for that 20 minutes, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 400 degrees. I am also going to get an egg wash ready for the tops. So I'm gonna whisk together an egg with a little bit of water, and then I'm gonna brush it over the tops of the loaves and then bake for about 25 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, just until they're a nice golden color. I took them out of the loaf pans pretty much right away and let them finish cooling on a wire rack. So now we have two beautiful loaves of sandwich bread to get us through the next week or two. So 
So after my sandwich bread was done, I needed to feed my sourdough starter. This was about noon or one o'clock and that is the perfect time to feed my sourdough starter if I wanna get a loaf started um, in the evening. My sourdough starter typically peaks at around eight hours. So I emptied all of the contents of my sourdough starter and I weigh it out. I usually do even amounts of starter, water, and flour for my sourdough starter. So I empty my sourdough starter and I start fresh. I put anywhere from 50 to 100 grams of starter in my canister and then I do 50 to 100 grams of water and 50 to 100 grams of flour. Um, that's just depending on how much I need for the recipes I'm going to be making. I believe this time around I did do about 100 grams of each. Sometimes I do a little bit less water. Um, if I were doing 100 grams of starter and 100 grams of flour, I might do 80 to 90 grams of water. I always like to make sure my water is at room temperature. I just find that it does a little bit better. Okay, now it is about 8 p.m. and I'm going to get started on my sourdough loaf. So I am going to measure 50 grams of starter out. This is active bubbly starter. And then I am going to add 350 grams of lukewarm water. And then I'm going to whisk that together. After I have the starter and the water mixed together, I add 500 grams of bread flour and about nine grams of salt. I just do a really big pinch. Then I mix it together as much as I can with either a spoon or a spatula. And then I will use my hands to make sure there are no chunks of flour and it's all incorporated well mixed together I cover it with a damp towel and let it rest for about 30 minutes before my first set of stretch and folds and this is actually my only set of stretch and folds that I do um, besides the next day I do one more set I know some recipes call for about three to four sets of stretch and folds every 30 minutes um, but this one is a pretty tried and true recipe I have had pretty good success with it. Okay, so then the next morning, I take it out of the bowl, put it on a floured surface, do a set of stretch and folds, and then I am going to add some tension to the dough by rolling, rolling it. And then I'm going to put it upside down into a floured bowl and let it rest covered for about an hour before I am ready to bake it. So the easiest way to get it out of the bowl is I take off the towel and put a piece of parchment paper over and flip it over and then I'm just gonna pat it down with a little bit of flour and score it. I usually just do a big C and then maybe some little leaf designs, nothing too fancy around here. And then I just use the parchment paper to put it in the cast iron Dutch oven. So I have my oven preheat at 450 degrees convection for at least 45 minutes before I put the bread in there. This just helps it get a really crispy crust. I will bake it with the Dutch oven lid on for about 20 to 25 minutes and then another um, 25 to 30 minutes without the lid. It's the next morning and I am going to get started on some sourdough English muffins. 
I made sure to feed my sourdough starter the night before so it, it was nice and active and ready to go. I start by heating up 245 grams of whole milk, 120 grams of water, and 56 grams of butter. You can do this on the stove or in the microwave. I found that the microwave is a little bit easier for me because you don't want it to be too hot. And when I tried it on the stove, it got really hot really fast and took a while to come down because you don't want it too hot when you are going to add these to your other ingredients. So then I added about 75 grams of starter and 24 grams of sugar, which is about two tablespoons of sugar to a bowl. And then I poured over the milk mixture slowly while I whisked. Then I added 500 grams of all-purpose flour, 9 grams of salt, and got it all stirred and combined. Once it was all combined, I covered it and let it rest for 30 minutes, and then I worked it into a pretty smooth ball. I just did some stretches and folds. And then I covered my dough with a damp towel and let it rise um, for eight to ten hours i want to say that it ended up being about eight hours um, until it was double the size i put this in my oven with the oven light on because once again our house is usually a little drafty especially in the kitchen so yeah this is all you have to do for the whole day and then you are going to put it in the fridge overnight so the next morning i removed the cold dough from the fridge and um, got it out of the bowl onto a floured surface and I let it rest about 10 minutes. While it rested, I got a sheet pan out with some parchment paper and cornmeal. This just will prevent the dough from sticking to it and then gives the right kind of texture to the English muffin. So I got that all ready and then it was time to pat the dough out into a rectangle and cut it into about three inch diameter circles. And I just used like a little cocktail glass for this and put them onto the baking sheet. After they were all cut, I covered the sheet pan and let it rise again for about an hour. And then finally it was time to cook them and these are a little bit more work than just throwing some bread in the oven i heated up my pan to about medium heat and i added um, as many english muffins that would fit in the pan and i let it cook for about eight to ten minutes per side until it was brown and then you know they're done when you kind of pinch the sides and it springs back so yeah, you just go through all of your English muffins, let them cool, and these are something that you can have for breakfast that day because it really doesn't take a lot of time, or you can save them for a breakfast or snack in the future. Next, I get started on some hamburger buns, and this night we did have them for dinner. We actually used them for some chicken sandwiches, but these are something that I like to make because they are easy, and once again, they freeze really well. So I start by just getting all the ingredients out, and then I start by um, adding two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast to three tablespoons of warm water. And I just allow this to get nice and foamy. My bigger bowl I combine the three and a third cups of flour one teaspoon of salt and three tablespoons of sugar and I just mix this together and then what I do is I add some butter so I add three tablespoons of cubed butter just with my fingers and let it get all nice and crumbly 
And then what I do is I add in one cup of water, one egg, and the bowl of the water and yeast that's all foamy and ready to go. And then I'm just gonna knead this until it is ready to go. It's gonna be a little bit sticky, um, but then I'm just gonna cover and let it rise for about an hour or until it's doubled. I have found that an hour is the perfect amount of time. Once it has doubled, I just remove it from the bowl and then I cut it into eight pieces. And then I work it into a ball that is round on top but flat on bottom. So it's the perfect bun shape. Um, and then I just put these on a parchment lined baking sheet and cover it with plastic wrap that is sprayed. Um, and then I let it rise for another 30 minutes. After the buns have risen for another 30 minutes, I just do an egg wash over the top um, and then I can add sesame seeds or poppy seeds. I use everything but the bagel seasoning for these and then I bake them at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. These hamburger buns can literally be done in about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. So this is something that you can start late afternoon and they will be ready for dinner. And lastly, here I have my little helper, my three-year-old Owen, helping me get started on some flour tortillas. So he just helps me add three cups of flour, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of baking powder to a bowl and get that stirred up. Once the dry ingredients are mixed, I just make a little well in the middle of the bowl and I add a third cup of oil. I used um, some olive oil for this and then I used a cup of warm water. After I got this all combined, I kneaded the dough for about two minutes until it was smooth. Once the dough was smooth, I divided it into eight portions. This recipe actually is meant for 16 portions, but I wanted to make bigger tortillas the size of um, the burrito tortillas that you would get at the store. So I only did eight in this recipe. Once I divided them into eight pieces, I made a ball and then I flattened them and made sure that both sides had flour and then I covered and let them rest for only 15 minutes. The recipe does say that you can let them rest for up to two hours if you need to. If you have little ones, that's always handy because you never know what's gonna come up.
these rest for about 15 minutes and then I rolled them out until they were nice and thin and then added them to a nice warm skillet. Um, mine did best at about medium high heat. Depending on your range, if you have like a gas flame, you might want to do lower. But the first one is kind of your test. These cook up really fast. You only cook um, them for about 45 seconds or maybe a minute. And then once you flip it, it's only another 15 to 20 seconds. Um, and what I did is I just put these on a plate and then covered them with a towel so they would stay nice and warm. I have only made these tortillas a few times but they are gonna be something that we keep in our rotation. These are something that I will not buy at the store anymore because they are so simple to make. Um, but I do recommend playing with your stove temperature with the first one. You don't wanna cook it too long, then it becomes a little tough. Um, these tortillas don't require you to plan ahead as they don't have any real rise time, except for like 15 minutes or so. And I would say they only take about 30 to 40 minutes from start to finish. So you can easily put them together while you're cooking dinner. Um, you could also roll out the dough and freeze with parchment paper between each tortilla. After I made these, I um, actually used them for some breakfast burritos for my husband. I've never seen anyone use sausage gravy for breakfast burritos. I know that it, it's probably done and people probably do it, but I haven't seen a video of anyone using it. It is so delicious. Um, and on these, I just added some scrambled eggs and some cheese. In the past, I have added some hash browns, peppers, onions, which are also del so delicious. But this time I kept it simple. It's definitely not the healthiest option, but it beats stopping at the corner store in the morning for something fried. So to make the sausage gravy, I just browned the sausage, added a little bit of flour and then some milk. I seasoned it with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder, and then let it cook down and thicken up. And it was so easy. I just put these on the tortillas, which were still warm because they were so fresh. Um, topped it with some scrambled egg and some shredded cheese, rolled them up, and then I rolled them in plastic wrap and put them in the fridge. So each day this week, my husband has taken them out of the fridge, threw it in the microwave for about a minute, and then just threw it in a pan while he was getting his lunch and everything together. That way it would brown on all sides and be just a little bit more delicious. Um, also, if you warm these up and wrap them in foil, they will stay warm for a while. So you could eat it once you got to work or I don't know, about an hour later. Thanks so much for spending these few days in the kitchen with me. And if you try any of these recipes, please let me know in the comments below.